hello, hello. Welcome back. Today is Friday and that means that it is time to look at some new makeup releases. It's been a few weeks since I've done this. So you might see some releases that are not necessarily new, but that I just really wanted to talk about. You'll definitely see some that have just been announced. I have got Trend Mood pulled up on my Instagram and let's just get right into it. I'm gonna scoot over just, just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. Also having like a blue moment today. I busted out my Club Nebula palette from Kaleidos and I just, I don't know, I was, I was vibing on some bluesy greensy kind of look today. So that's what we're going with. And I'm not mad. I'm not mad at it at all. <laughs> so let's just, all right. So I've scooted over. We're going to, we're going to get right into it. The first release that I really, really, really wanted to talk about is from Mama Pat McGrath. And I was so excited when I saw that she was releasing another 10 pan eyeshadow palette. And I am not going to lie, when I first saw the palette, I was a little disappointed. Because for the for about like two weeks leading up to the release of the palette, she was posting all these really beautiful, colorful pictures on her Instagram, all of these kind of futuristic, like space age kind of photos. And when I saw the palette, I was a little bit disappointed. And, you know, Pat McGrath tends to put this kind of like goldeny filter on her photos. So it's just not a great way to kind of gauge the colors of this palette. And, you know, if I'm honest, the color story is very similar to a lot of palettes that she's been releasing. And I understand that with these larger palettes, she wants to reach as broad of an audience as possible. So that may be why she didn't experiment more with colors, but like, just look at the packaging. It's got rainbows. It's, you know, kind of like Chromatica, Lady Gaga-ish. And I just didn't feel like that was very reflective of the palette. I feel like it was reflective of like one or two colors in the palette, but not all of them. And so I was a little disappointed. I'm looking forward to seeing it in store. Like I love every Pat McGrath palette that I have. Her blush is like the only blush I wear now. So it's, you know, I, I'm willing to give it a chance, but I don't know if I'm going to pick it up until I can like actually go to Sephora and play with it. Um, but I don't know, I just, I kind of want to, you know, play with the colors a little bit more. It just is, it's so similar to a lot of the other palettes that she's released, but I don't know. It's, there's a bunch of different finishes. There's, I think a couple different multi-chromes in there as well. So you do get some of those really pretty shifting shades. I am extremely interested in the other thing she's releasing with this palette, and that is the Intensivize Artistry Wand. And that looks really cool. The Artistry Wand is supposed to be like a mixing liquid and a pen form. So you can just like put it on your eyes and then you can directly put your eyeshadow on top of it and it's supposed to really intensify the shadows. That I'm really interested in. That I probably will pick up because, you know, not only will that be great with her eyeshadows, but that'll look really good with a bunch of other eyeshadows as well. So the next release that I really wanted to talk about and kind of anti-haul, <laughs> like hard anti-haul is this from Vanity Makeup Cosmetics. I saw this and honestly, my first thought was, I thought KKW was shutting down temporarily. Like I thought this was a KKW release and I can't, like, I can't see it as anything else. Aside from it looking like a KKW palette, it is $95. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. The packaging is gorgeous. You know, the pigmentation from the pictures looks really nice. It looks really great, but $95 is a lot. Like I've never tried vanity makeup, so I don't know how good the quality is, but like for $95, y'all must be getting up to like, 
you know, like Pat McGrath, like Natasha Denona levels here. Like that's, that's an absurd amount of money for a palette that you can do with a KKW palette from Ulta. So like just, I'm gonna like put here, but like, just like, look at these. They all look exactly the same. So I just, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to, to rip on that one a little bit. Um, <laughs> no offense to Vanity Cosmetics, but no, no. KKW is already doing KKW like palettes. Don't, there's no need to go there. So Besame announced their next Disney princess release and it is Aurora from Sleeping Beauty. And I am very tempted to buy this one because after, I think Sleeping Beauty is probably like my third favorite Disney movie after Princess and the Frog and Beauty and the Beast. So I am really tempted to buy this and it is beautiful. I have said, I think in previous videos that this Disney collab is I feel like how adult Disney collaborations should be done. Like this is like Disney makeup for grown-ups and I appreciate that they're not leaning into the more like little kid-esque themes that you see I think in a lot of Disney collabs. I like that they're going for a more adult, grown-up, sophisticated kind of vibe. I mean the packaging is gorgeous. They are refillable compacts which I think is great. And it also kind of helps to justify the price a little bit. These come with the refillable compact and they also come with a lipstick. And the lipstick is based on the color that the princess wore in the Disney movie, which is, I think, really unique, really, really cool. So they are $125 for the compact and the lipstick, which is steep. And there's only 500 units available. So you got to be like on it when they drop. And so this one is dropping on August 10th at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So if you're interested in this, and I'm not gonna lie, I kind of am, I would definitely make sure that you have the website up and running and ready to go. And I should note that it's a highlight powder. It's not like a setting powder. It's not like an airbrush powder. It's, it's like a more highlight powder, but it's just, it's beautiful. It's really, really pretty and this is the first princess collection release that I'm very, very tempted by. I've completely forgot about the Belle release, so I'm I'm tempted to get this one and Tiana when that comes out, I think in November. Let's talk about Kylie Cosmetics, y'all. <laughs> so earlier this week, I posted a tutorial video using one of the older Kylie Cosmetics palettes. I busted out my Kylie and Balmain palette that came out a few years ago and I just did a look with that and it was really fun kind of digging into some of her old palettes and I also did it kind of in anticipation that she was going to be releasing her birthday collection. Um, this has kind of been a staple for her over the years is to release a big collection on her birthday so I was really curious to kind of see what she was going to do and because she's turning 24 she's doing this golden 24 karat collection that I think is a really neat idea. But then when I started seeing the photos, I was not impressed. Um, I just, it felt like a release that had been done before, not necessarily by Kylie Cosmetics, but by everyone else. Um, the palette is, you know, it's got pretty colors. It's all gold, which makes sense since it's a 24 karat gold collection but it's just not screaming at me. Like there's maybe one or two shades in there that I think are really, really pretty, but not pretty enough to justify buying the whole palette. And I don't like those huge like 24 pan palettes. Like you're just setting me up for failure. You're setting me up for not using all of the colors. Um, you know, because it always happens. I always gravitate towards like you know, in those huge palettes, I gravitate towards maybe like six colors that I use continuously. So I just, uh, the palette's a no for me. There's also a highlighter, a body glow, which I have to admit the highlighter is like stupid pretty. Like, it's stupid pretty. I'm very tempted by this highlighter. 
um, but I just don't wear like hardcore gold. Like I'll do like a fake gold, but I don't know that highlight is like, is gold. So I don't know, we'll see. I think it'll look really stunning on deeper skin tones. So I think if you have a darker skin tone, I think that gold highlight is gonna look amazing. Um, there's also a body glow. I don't do body glows, y'all. I don't like being sticky. I don't care how much they say it dries down. It almost never does. I don't like the little like glowy particles like transferring to different surfaces. Like it's just, it's, it's a hard no for me. Um, they're also coming out in this collection with a lip lacquer set. There's like four different shades. It looks kind of glossy. Not super interested in those. Um, there's a liquid eyeliner duo that are really pretty. The They're very glittery and shimmery and nice. So I think those are really nice and pretty. There's something new called an all over gloss. And this all over gloss comes in a very small tube, which seems counterintuitive since it is an all over gloss and you can use it all over. I feel like you would want something a little bit more substantial in size, but that's just me. <laughs> that's just, that's just me over here. Oh, and there's also a 24 karat gold lip serum with little gold flecks. Again, hard pass. You don't need gold in your skin, lip, hair care. It's not necessary. It's just there. So I don't, I don't personally see the appeal of it, but that's just me. So I think in all this collection is going to be a big pass for me. I might revise that looking at that liquid eyeliner that's very glittery I think that's super pretty but that to me was the only thing in that collection I saw that was like this is beautiful because again I just I feel like it's a color story that's been done a thousand times it's you know and when you're doing like a gold release you know like when you're doing a gold release you want to make it you know, there's only so much you can do because gold is just one color, you know, so you have to be really creative in how you build around that. And I don't think that that was really accomplished here. So I don't know, I'm, I'm excited to see what other releases she's going to have. I generally really like her eye palettes, um, even more so than her lip kits. But I do also really like her bullet lipsticks. I think the bullet lipsticks are really good. I'm curious to try their new formula. But I don't know, nothing in this collection is really speaking to me. So hopefully she'll have, you know, another fall collection or maybe like a Christmas collection that I can try. But overall, I think that one's a pass. It's not like a hard pass, but it's a pass. Uh, ColourPop is coming out with some quads. They are having, there's like a nude collection, which is really pretty. I think they also came out with a more like vibrant color collection, which is really nice. I think the ColourPop formula is generally pretty good. So I, you know, I'm definitely on board with that. I think have, I like quads because you can do a lot with them, but it's not taking up a lot of space. So if you like nudes, I think that's a really good option. I've got a gazillion nudes in my eyeshadow collection right now. So I probably won't be picking up any of these but they're really pretty. Another release that I'm kind of intrigued by is a mini eyeshadow palette from KVD Beauty. And I generally am not a fan of KVD Beauty. Their products just don't really speak to me. They never really have. Their line has never really been my aesthetic. Um, aside from any, I didn't really care much about like the controversy with that line. It was never, of all the things going on in the world, the KVD drama was never terribly high on my radar. Um, but I just, you know, the products I was just always kind of indifferent about, never intrigued enough to buy any of it. Um, however, this mini palette looks really pretty. It's very fall themed, it's very fall colored. I love that it's got like a swirly shade, like I'm a sucker for the aesthetics of a swirly eyeshadow shade. 
Um, so I'm very intrigued by that. And then I love that there's kind of like a muted dark green. I've been really on board with greens lately. So I'm really excited about that. And it just, it looks like a really nice fall palette. So honestly, I might pick this up. Of all of the palettes I've seen so far, this is the one that kind of speaks to me the most. And I mean, part of that is fall is like my favorite season, but I know I'm basic. I'm basic. I know it. It's okay. But fall is one of my favorite seasons and this palette just like screams fall and that's really exciting. And it's, you know, the first palette from KVD Beauty that I'm actually really intrigued by. So that's, that's saying something. That's, that's definitely saying something. Okay, Natasha Denona is coming out with the Smoke Collection. It's a mini Xenon eyeshadow palette, and that's going to be $25, which is what her mini palettes usually are. I love her mini palettes. Her mini retro palette is honestly one of the favorite palettes in my collection. Um, so the mini palettes are great. They always usually have a really good formula. And in this collection is also some, what they're calling macro tech eye crayons, and those will be $24, which seems a bit pricey. Um, but there is also going to be long wearing full coverage cream eyeliner. And that I'm kind of curious about. I don't generally wear a lot of eyeliner though, so I'm probably gonna pass on it. Having hooded eyes, it's just really, it's, Unless I'm doing like a super dramatic like cat eye, it's really tough for me to wear eyeliner without completely hiding all of the shadow that's underneath it. I'm honestly probably going to pass on the whole collection. I'm just, when I was in high school, I was kind of more into the black smoky eye sort of look. It's not my vibe anymore. I like something, if I'm going to do like an intense smoky eye, I generally do it with a more, uh, with more browns and kind of like a neutral look to it. I think the black is just a little bit too harsh on me. Uh, but that's just me. That's my personal opinion. I also love the more colorful stuff, obviously. <laughs> so I think it's really pretty. And I think if you like the more smoky eye look, this will be really great because, you know, the Natasha Denona quality is just so good, especially in those mini palettes. So I think that that's definitely, definitely something really nice. So... There is a lot of other makeup that is coming out that I just don't care enough to talk about. I do want to talk about one thing though, and I'm mad at myself for even talking about it, um, but I'm going to anyway. I feel like I just kind of need to go on a little bit of a rant. <laughs> So, Jeffree Star is coming out with a new collection. It is the Pink Religion Collection. And I am so 100% not here for it, for a variety of reasons. Number one, because Jeffree Star is a trash human being, and I don't ever want to support any of his products. I don't you know, I don't think he deserves the support. Um, I just, he's a garbage person and garbage people don't get my money. I'm sorry. They don't. There is also the religious element of it. I am a pretty devout Christian and I struggle deeply with people using religion, religious artifacts, and religious symbolism to make money. I just think that's gross. Um, like you can see like in the palettes, there's like crosses embossed into the eyeshadow shades. And I just, I just think that's icky. I think that's icky. I think if it were a different religion, there would be a huge uproar. Like, can you imagine if like 
the Islamic crescent moons or if like the Jewish Star of Davids were stamped into these eyeshadow palettes, like there is no way that that would make it across the cutting room floor. Like it just, it wouldn't. And I'm surprised that this made it across the cutting room floor. And I mean, I'm not because it's Jeffree Star, but like, and everything about my religion, like here's the thing that I struggle with. And I think I struggle with this a lot because it's Jeffree Star. One of the biggest imperatives in my religion is to love your neighbor as yourself, to be a good person, to do good deeds, to do good things, to glorify God by selfless acts. And all of these teachings that I hold very near and dear to my heart seem to be the antithesis of Jeffree Star. So for him to use this religious symbolism this religious iconography to sell his products is gross. It's disgusting. I don't want to go as far as saying that it's blasphemous because I think that's a very big word. Um, but I just, I just, I think it's, I think it's gross. I think it's gross. And I just, uh, I have so many issues with this release and, I mean, obviously I have so many issues with him as an individual, but I am just, that is a hot take, I know. And I especially don't like it from a creator like Jeffree Star who did this purely to become controversial, purely so we would talk about it. And I hate that I am talking about it, but I feel like I need to, I need to get it off my chest. Pink bubblegum gross collection is, just a culmination of all of the gross things that Jeffrey does. And like, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going off on a tangent, but I feel like I need to. He's shown over and over again that he is not a good person. You know, some people will say, oh, separate the brand from the person, you know, or separate the products from the brand. Like, I, I can't do that. You know, if this were a different Jeffree Star collection, maybe, but you're using my faith to try to sell products and I just don't want to go there. Like, I'm sorry. I just don't want to go there. So just go away. Go away with your, get out of here with your pink religion palette. I don't want it. We don't need it. We shouldn't feel obligated to buy it. If you want to buy it, go for it. You do you, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't feel the need to cater to Jeffree Star anymore. We just shouldn't. Whew. Okay. We've calmed down. We're calm. We're calm again. <laughs> I flew off. We're calm again. We're good. We're calm. We're happy. Happy days. This is a beautiful day. We're happy. The last thing I wanted to talk about is not makeup, but perfume. Gucci Flora, I'm gonna buy this just for the bottle. <laughs> Honestly, I'm buying it just for the bottle because the bottle is gorgeous. I am a sucker for floral print and I'm an even bigger sucker for vintage floral print. And this looks stunning. It's got a bunch of scents that I love. It's got pear, white gardenia, brown sugar, some jasmine, pear blossoms. It looks like it's gonna smell amazing. So I'm gonna be going to Sephora. I'm going to be picking this up and I am only not going to buy it if it smells like hot trash. I don't wanna buy a perfume online because if I get it and I hate it, that's, that sucks. So <laughs> I'm gonna go to Sephora, I'm gonna try it out and I'm honestly just going to display the bottle on my vanity because I'm vain and I like seeing pretty things. So I just wanted to end this on a happy note because we deserve to have it end on a happy note. Anyway, we can all agree or disagree about what kind of products we like and what kind of, um, what kind of businesses we want to give our money to. That's why I love these kind of videos is we can just give our opinions and we can just really, we can enjoy the healthy debate. 
if you completely disagree with something I said, that's fine. And there's probably things in there that you loved that I thought were hot trash. And there's probably things that I love that you think are hot trash. And that's okay. That's why these videos are great. That's why these videos are fun. Anyway, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go get some work done today. I'm going to go out on a walk, enjoy the beautiful weather of late summer. And I just, I hope y'all have a good day too. God bless. Love you guys. Have a good one.